Hi, it's Vex, and today I'll discuss my first Simic Commander, Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. Yep, this is long overdue. Been wanting to build this since uh, uh, Ikoria, but after building my uh, Kalia deck right there, I was like, man, Kalia cheats just angels, demons, and dragons. I want to cheat other big things. I want to be a giant spike. I mean, uh, Timmy, and just bam, 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 big, big fatty after big fatty onto the battlefield. I want to cheat it into play, just like Kalia. So, you know, Simic is probably the best color right now in Magic. You know, with Oko and Standard and everything. And let's see if it's uh, the best color in Commander. Um, spoiler alert, it, it isn't. But I think Soul Tide is the best uh, color combination. I mean, everyone plays, everyone plays Soul Tide. Um, Majolta, Yara, they play Soul Tide in their five color deck because everything's based Soul Tide. So, however, let's focus, focus again. Back on Kitten. Let's see what Kitten does. So, Kitten has the ability whenever you tap, a non-land permit for mana, add one mana of any type that permit produced. All right, so this, you know, like increase our mana production big time. Can only cost one green and one blue, so very cheap, two, two. And then we have the, the uh, extra ability. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human, remember non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So. We just want to cheat some big fatties in here. The interesting part is that, uh, let me take these. Oops, I had too many cards there. Uh, don't, don't belong in the deck. We want to cheat some big fatties. Uh, the interesting part is that, you know, it's kind of got its own like special thing. Like I think Kid would be strong just with this ability because he probably could just double mana. Uh, except for they just stapled on a win condition right onto Kinnon. Um, and of course it wouldn't be a Vex video because I, I, I am definitely a Johnny Combo better if we didn't have infinite combos. So essentially, you know, this can go infinite with Pemmin's Aura just like Vexera, uh, deck tech I did. Where is that? Where is that Aura? Right here. Pemmin's Aura, free from the real. You know, of course, uh, with Kinnon on the battlefield. So it's a little, it's a little more difficult than uh, Sexera, uh, but it's still achievable in this deck with Kinnon and some other creature. So, right, so this is all about big fatties, and you know, um, there's some Eldrazi in here, of course, there's gotta be Crater Hoof. Uh, so this again, this is a high powered deck, don't play in a low powered uh, um, meta. All right, let's go through the deck. I usually have a secondary commander for my uh, generals, but you know, I, I didn't exactly uh. You know, actually, just to be honest, I totally forgot about having secondary command. But there's actually a commander, another commander inside this deck, Thrasios. So if you want to use your imagination, you just add Thrasios and whatever partner you want and just play a Simic deck. Um, or just play Thrasios by himself. Thrasios is so powerful. This card, um, it's, I think it's the most expensive card of that, of that year. Even way above with Traxa. You know, Traxa is more popular, but Thrasios is just so much more powerful. All right, so always have your tokens. You know, I just got some double masters. You got some foil tokens, so it's pretty neat. Plant tokens, beast tokens, ape token for your pungifies, birds. Got your food token for Oko, of course. So, yep, could be your secondary partner, but it's also a good mana sink too. You could just uh, sink your mana to that scry and draw cards. So, very good with Kinnon. Uh, so, what, what Kinnon asks of you is, he, uh, he wants you to have non-land permanents that produce mana. So. Ramping with Cultivate, Kadama's Reach doesn't really work out because we get the land, but we don't get like the double mana. So what we want has mana dorks, mana rocks, things that produce mana that are non-lands. So we start off with our non-land mana producers, Birds of Paradise, Elvis Mystic, Finhorn Elves, Lana War Elves, so like a bunch of elves, Bloom Tender. So Bloom Tender itself with another blue permit can actually go infinite with Kim Pemmin's Aura. Let me find that aura again right here. So you, you just put this on here, can go permanent, um, except for it can only make like, I think infinite, uh, um, infinite green mana. So Bloom Tender can make two different, two mana. Incubation Druid, right here. Uh, so again, if you uh, adapt the Incubation Druid and have Pemmin's already, you can go infinite without Kinnon. Merrily Pixie, I just really like this card. It's a cool Throne of Eldraine card. It makes uh, both green and blue. 
I wish they had a one mana dork that actually made green and blue. Uh, I know no Noble Heart makes green, blue, white, but I can't put Noble Heart in the deck. So I wish it's just straight green or green or blue. Paradise Druid. This this and Soul and Carry added one of the best targets for the Pimmons Aura if you want to make infinite mana. Um, and, and with these two, you can make infinite blue and green mana. Essentially, if you make infinite blue and green mana, you should be able to beat win um, by essentially putting every creature on your deck onto the battlefield with Kinnon's ability. That's why you want to use infinite mana to do. Um, if, if you're only allowed, like, if you're only able to make infinite green mana, then you have to pay, you know, one blue and, you know, six green for, for, um, sorry, for Kinnon's ability. Let's see if I can any back again, right here. So, just, just remember that. There's another, another infinite mana combo, Basalt Monolith, the, the famous one. Uh, Basalt Monolith, but make, makes, in, like, infinite colorless, um, by itself. You have Priest of Titania. This counts all elves. So if your opponent's playing elves, it counts their elves too. Um, just remember that, each green man for each elf. Again, Chrome Mox, uh, can tap for two with Kinnon, Ever Floating Chalice, Mana Crypt, Mox Amber. So just a lot of cheap um, cheap ways to produce mana. Soul Ring, of course, or only Soul Ring. Arcane Signet, Simic Signet, Talisman Curiosity, Basalt Model can go infinite just with Kinnon. So how it works is use tap three, it produces four, use three of it to untap a salt monolith and keep going on. Um, a cool one is Great Henge. It produces mana, so it can produce three mana with Kinnon. Um, but it's also really cool too, because it, it gets cheap for your, it gets cheap when if you have big fatties on the battlefield and then you can get uh, plus one, plus one counters and draw cards with Great Henge. So it's a very good card. Pemmons Aura and Free From Real, they're essentially the same card. Pemmons Aura is a little bit harder to cast with uh, double blue, but um, can give you a uh, Shroud right here, this ability. So don't don't forget you can get Shroud. And also you you, you can use Pemmons Aura to you know increase power or toughness. Free From Real is just you know a, a Pemmon, cheaper Pemmons Aura. So here are the big fatties of the deck. This Kugla is really cool. Uh, it does a, a couple things, you know. It can uh, fight a creature when it enters the battlefield. I, I love this card. When I saw this card in, in Ikoria, I just like, I need to put this in EDH deck somehow. And I, I found a place to put it. And then when it, it attacks, um, you know, destroy artifact or enchantment that, that the Fendi player controls. And this cool part here is one and one green. Return target human you control to its owner's hand. Kugla gains indestructible intent end of turn. So what happens is if somebody's trying to attack Kinnon or points a spell, um, a kill spell at Kinnon, what you can do is you, since Kinnon's a human, you can use Kugla's ability to bounce Kinnon back to your hand, save it, and also protect Kugla itself. So let's put this on the side. So that's pretty cool. Of course, you know, you wouldn't have a green deck without Avenger of Zendikar. I know we don't have like Cultivates or Kadama's Reaches, but Avengers of Zendikar, you know, still a big fatty, still good with Tooth and Nail, still good with Crater Hoof Behemoth. So, of course, again, you know, we want to make tons of mana with our Kinnon. So if we're making uh, double mana, let's double that double mana to triple it. To, so an elf makes six mana. You know, you, you gotta go big, right? You gotta go Timmy style big. Just go big. Regal Force, draw some cards. Crater Hoof Behemoth, you know, this is the finisher right there. I mean, it's Crater Hoof. Tide Sprout Tyrant. Uh, you know, this allows you some protection to bounce your opponent's um, stuff. So it's, 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 you know, Simic doesn't have like, you know, destroy target creature, a lot of that. So you, you, you can just say you use Tide Sprout Tyrant as a resource. And it's also, you know, pretty big, 5-5 five, five flying. Born Clex, oh, super annoying, doubles your mana. Um, all right, well, I guess doubles your mana, but with Kinnon, just, you know, you get plus one. And then your, your opponents get like, you know, one half. Void Winner, I, I actually have a story about this. My uh, opponent stole this, and I, I had a um, uh, an even cast card to kill my own Void Winner, um, so I wouldn't die, but I couldn't cast it, because he had the Void win Winner. So it kind of sucks. I kind of died to my own card, but as I always say, if you play a card, you should be okay playing against it because you know it's not fair that you get you get to like 
uh, credit host somebody with somebody else to credit host you, you can't be bitter about that. You know, Ulamog, got to play the big Aldrazi. Ulamog, Dark Steel, other Ulamog, Blight Steel, it that betrays. It that betrays is so cool. So when they annihilate, if you um, if they sacrifice a non-token permanent, you put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So so you get their stuff. Um, annihilers mean again if if you want to play against annihil if you want to put annihilator cards in your deck, you should be able to play against annihilator cards and sack your permanent. So remember that infinite mana. What what you want to do is th these are just mana sinks. Huge mana sinks. I, I know uh, Thrasios is a good mana sink right here. You pay four, draw cards. Walking Ballista, very good mana sink. If you go infinite uh, with mana, Walking Ballista just kill kill everybody. Uh, you, you cannot flip Walking Ballista over with Kinnon because it'll be zero zero and it'll just die. Uh, just remember that. Uh, Hydra Crisis, you know, you can draw many more cards. Uh, a good mana sink. And then you have some tutors. You have your Wordly, wordly Tutor. If you want to tutor any of your, your creatures or you need your walking ballista to win. Green Sun Zenith. Finale of Devastation, Core of Calling. So this is one of your win conditions. You have infinite mana, you give your creatures infinite, infinite. And then just haste and then just like alpha strike everybody. Tooth and Nail, another win condition. You know, you go in your, de your deck, find your two creatures. Usually Crater Hoof and Avenger of Zendikar. Let me see if I can get those real quick here. Crater Hoof and Avenger, you know, Avenger makes tons of tokens. Crater Hoof, you know, pumps everybody plus X plus X with the number of creatures, so. And then you swing out. Uh, so you have those big fatties, tutors. You have, of course you're playing blue, you gotta have some, some counter, some protection suite, some counter spells. Swan Song, regular counter spell. Narset's Reversal, sorry. Narset's Reversal. Very good card. I love it's. It's just you get to copy their spell, and if it's a big spell, they, they can't recast it when it, go, when it bounces back to their hand. So it's a really nice card. Fierce guardianship. You know you got to protect your commander. Some uh, utility cards here. Eternal witness. You know that's always a good card. Most played green card, I believe. Breck sage. Good card. Spark double. You got to copy some fatties. You know. Actually, I believe you, you can copy Kinnon and do an extra plus one mana because it makes it non-legendary. So that's pretty cool. Dramatic Reversal. So this is kind of like a piece of ramp, uh, temporary ramp ritual style effect where you just, you have your elves and your mana rock and you just use Dramatic Reversal to untap all those things. Biomancer is familiar. This actually works with both your uh, um, Kinnon and Thrasios. So it's kind of cool. I actually challenge you guys. I, I know Thrasios is, Thrasios is a partner. Let me find, I keep losing Thrasios. Just keep throwing him around like it's worthless. <laughs> Thrasios is a partner, but you know, it's, it's so strong by itself. I challenge you guys just to play Thrasios by himself. You know, partnerless. Biomancer's familiar, or, or, or put some kind of partner in there where you can't even cast it unless you have some special, you know, your Paradise Druid and another card. So Biomancer's familiar, very good with, uh, Reducing the cost of activating Kinnon. Seaborn Muse. Of course, Seaborn Muse and Thrasios are like value town. Um, but Seaborn Muse, Seaborn Muse, and uh, Kinnon is pretty good too. You can activate Kinnon Molt like every turn. There, There is no sorcery restriction on Kinnon, so you activate everybody's turn. Heroic Intervention. We got a lot of mana doors, so you gotta protect them. So that's a good card. Lightning Greaves. You know, you gotta protect your commander again. Here's some card draw. Uh, Solvent Library, you're in green, just pay eight life the first time, draw draw all three cards. Ristic Study, you know, you pay one for that. Since you have big fatties, Return of Wild Speaker is really cool. And then you have all non-human creatures, so you can just draw cards equal to the greatest power among them. Or you can give them an uh, overrun if, you know, you don't have your Crayer Hoof or whatever. You, you can kind of finish people off this way. Good good split card. Consecrated Sphinx. Oh, it gets pretty crazy if there's two in the board, and that's happened to me with this deck. Uh, but it's pretty neat. Yeah, so you can more, more card draw. Here's some removal. Probably five, just reprinted Double Master, so. And I finally got the Ape token. Before I didn't have the Ape token, and I had to use the Beast token, but now I got the right token. So I'm happy about that. Blue, I mean, Cyclonic Rift. Beast Within, Oko. I mean, if you're playing blue-green, you gotta play Oko. 
you can oko their light steals or whatever. And last but not least, Triumph of the Hordes. I mean, you gotta cheese them out sometimes, right? This is actually my first deck I have this card in, and I, I've never used it yet, but uh, I've had Triumph of the Hordes used against me. Sometimes you, you just gotta do it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be a little filthy, right? <laughs> But it's all good. It's all good, you know. It's all good because if you know, you, you gotta be filthy sometimes. You know, the, the semi producing lands, command tower, breeding pool. So it's only, only straight two color, so not a lot of different mul different types of lands. Usually semi all semi lands, flooded grove, hinterland harbor, lumbering falls, semi growth chamber, temple of mystery, waterlogged glow grove, Yahamot coast, fetch lands, fable of passage, prismatic vista. A little dried arbor if you actually happen to have uh, green sun zenith turn one you can fetch this one so some extra mana makers uh castle garenbrig can make an extra mana if you tap tap four and tap garenbrig ancient tomb you know we got big fatties we might sometimes have to cast these fatties like you know manually without team in the play so ancient tomb helps uh utility lands out uh, was it out out uh alchemist uh, refuge i'm getting really tongue-tied today it's hard, it's hard to talk on camera sometimes, you know? While Wirewood Lead Lodge, I forgot to say, you can use this to cast things with Flash, so it gives a little utility. I rarely use it, ever, but you know, it's there. Untapped Target Elf, so you, if you're, um, your dude's making double mana or Priest of Titania, you can untap him. Scavenger Grounds, always love Graveyard Hate, uh, even though sometimes it's hard to find this piece, but it's there just in case. Then you have your uh, lands. I just have for this deck. I don't. There's no particular reason. I just have snow covered forest just for fun. There's no real reason. Snow covered islands. So snow lands. All right. So and and uh, I think my uh, deck text. What I'm trying to really hard to do is not to add like you know a bunch of reserve list cards. I feel like there's uh, a lot of bitterness towards that. But since we're here, I I, I can just talk about them if you want and if you have the budget for it. I try to keep this at, at this is really high on my budget but i try to keep uh things out of you know uh, a much lower budget so i took these cards out because it's just like exceeded the budget but if you really want you know obviously gear gay is cradle gear is cradle that'd be insane in the deck right i mean it's insane any green deck that produces lots of creatures uh i mean if you have one you want to play it be my guest you know tropical island misty rainforest uh mox diamond right this is a non a non-land source of mana that's a great card. You know, Mana Drain instead of Counterspell or Gilded Drake. So you can play these, like any of these cards in the deck. I'm just, not, I just exclude them because, you know, I mean, this, this is a, this would be amazing in the deck, but I just don't, I just don't need them, you know, to have, to have fun. Uh, so that's my like quick rant on that. Like if, if you want to, you can, if, if you don't want to, or you don't have them, it's okay. It's fine. Like I, I just don't play them because I just, so, I mean, I, I don't need a, that, that much power level. The lands, you know, it doesn't add increase the power level that much. Uh, except for Gaia's Cradle, of course. That's like, you know, I, I would have crop rotation if I had Gaia's Cradle on my deck because that card is so, so important and so insane. Like, it just wins games. I, I think Gaia's Cradle, uh, uh, quick, quick rant, is, is the most powerful card in EDH. I think... If you have that card, if you've ever seen it played, I know Game Nights has it played a bunch of times. If you've ever seen that card in action, it is so powerful and it makes so much mana, like seven, eight, nine, ten mana for one land. And I've seen it untap and make more mana, like, you know, maybe Sword, Sword, Feast, and Famine. So it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and the, price tag the price tag reflects the power it has, right? That's why it's like spiking like crazy. Um, but again, you know, I own it. I don't put it in my decks. I, I did make a video where, you know, it's, I said it's a staple because you, I, I want you to buy it before it spikes, but you know, it's, I, I posted that video before it spiked, but it's too late now. Uh, but definitely if you want it, you know, save up for it and get it and, and, and you won't be disappointed. Um, cause it'll, it'll retain its value. You probably sell for the same value that you bought it for. So don't be scared to save up and pay for it. Uh. It's spiking right now. I would wait for it to, you know, go down. All right, but uh, rant, rant aside, uh, going to uh, shovel this deck up and uh, do a sample hand. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. 
Let's uh, let's start this start this off. I mean, we're always looking for a mana door. A one mana mana door is like ideal, so you can play Kitten on turn two and tap it for two mana. But sometimes we don't get it there, so let's see what we got. All right, so we got five lands, four lands. A Seedborn Muse, don't really need that yet, but Oko, Oko's nice, not great. So this hand's not that bad. It's playable, I think, you know? Uh, so let's just uh, let's try it out. Let's see what we get, another land. Okay, so that's not our one mana mana door. You know, oh, I wish there was a different fetch land so I can, you know, like Fable Pass it so I can use it, but start. Right, turn one forest. We got a turn counter here. Um, this is a really slow turn, but all right, next turn. Void Wimmer, big fatty. Okay, can't play that for a long time. Turn two, you know, tap. So we have uh, choices. Playing Kinnon does not does nothing, so we'll play Paradise Druid. All right, let's turn two. Next turn, turn three. See what we got. Sylvan Library, oh, these things are coming on like off weird turns all right so remember what we could do is we could play kinnon right here say we play our commander kinnon and then we could tap this for one two then we could play oko right here so just just be con be conscious if if you play kinnon then you can tap your your um dorks for extra mana so i'll just put oko in here next to the dice Oh, you can't dice off screen already. All right. So Oko comes in, you know, let's say we just want to make a food. They don't have any creatures we care about right now. That's a little food token here. Let's put this food token in the corner here. Make some elk soon, you know. All right, turn four. So it's not bad. See, you see how like Kinnon allowed you to play five mana on turn, uh, with, with, with a mana dork on turn uh, uh, three. So let's see what we get. Dramatic reversal. Okay, we definitely don't need that yet. We don't need to untap anything. So let's see what we do. We could play this. Um, we could turn uh, this food. I don't, into a, uh, let's see here. We need more dice. 3-3 three, three elk. I wish they had, I wonder if they have an elk token. I haven't seen one yet. Through the elk, we can use to protect Kinnon and Oko. So this actually goes up. We need another dice thing. There's a lot of dice here. Biggest mistake in RD, plus ability to turn things into elk. Um, so we haven't done anything, but I think we can play a Seedborn Muse, you know, start our engine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we don't don't have enough to activate Kinnon, but next turn we might. So I'm gonna play Seedborn Muse. Let's see what we could do. And then, well, we can't really do much. So we'll just untap during their turn and then do nothing during their turn. Turn five. So let's see what we get here. Scavenger grounds. Okay, so now, now we can spin the wheel. Now we can spin the wheel here. We spin the wheel twice on, on our turn and everybody else's turn. So let's spin the wheel. Look at the top five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Bam, Born Clicks. Right? Oh, man. Let's play. I mean, or Consecrated Sphinx. I would still pick Born Clicks. It's just so nasty. Turn five, Born Clicks. That's sweet. Right there. And then on, on the next opponent's turn five, you untap, you know, all permits. Right? Boom. And now you get double mana from your lands, double mana from your Paradise Druid. So you tap this, you can keep Paradise Druid untap. You could just tap this and make tons more mana. Uh, well, only two more mana, so not tons. Right there, you play again, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what you hit next. Nyx Bloom Ancient, oh my God. Now hit this one, you could triple the mana. So we tapped, we have 10 mana. We use seven, we have three floating. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure about how this works with Kinnon. We'll be right back. I'm gonna look this up. Okay, we're back, we figured it out. Nyx Bloom Agent doesn't double, doesn't triple the extra mana Kinnon produces. So this one will produce uh, four mana. Uh, three from Nyx Bloom, tripling the regular one, and one from Kinnon, so four mana. 
So, so hypothetically, we have so three mana left in our pool here, and this thing will produce this four mana. So you're like, okay, let's just spin the wheel again, right? This is still on your second opponent's turn, right next to you. So we're just like, let's spin again. One, two, three, four, five. You know, why not? I mean, we need more room for our big fatties. Okay, Priest of Titania, that's an elf. That was not, not the hit we want, but you know what? Next turn, boom. Right, so each of these lands produce four mana with Born Clicks and Nyx Bloom. This produces four mana, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, four times six, 24 mana. We can activate Kinnon three times. You know, let's just go to it. one, two, three, four, five. This is only uh, two opponents, the opponent across the tail from you. Nothing, okay, we're just like, okay, sure, whatever. One, two, three, four, five. This is only turn five, remember that. Oh, Walking Blizzard died, this is a, that's another whiff. Okay, well, you know, our inciting turn just died here. One, two, three, four, five. So, let's see what we get here. Hit that betrays, boom. All right, slam that to the ground. And then, the person next to you, you know, you untap everything and do the same thing, you know, four times over. And they'll probably concede at this point. You know, let's see, uh, Ulamog, Darksteel, Ulamog, right? Uh, three more times, not four more times. One, two, three, four, five. So it's exciting here. We got Ty Tice Prop Tyrant, you know. And then one, two, three, four, five. Elvis Mystic. <laughs> hey, it makes four mana, I guess. This is if, if you don't get disrupted. You know, once your opponent sees what's going on, they're, they're going to point all the machine guns at you and uh, go crazy. So. Yeah, this is really like interesting to see. By turn five, you can do all these shenanigans with Kinnon. Kin That's why it's very powerful. Um, it might go high in the salt score. People keep playing it. But you know, it's pretty fun. I mean, try not to be too unfair with all your stuff. But you know, that's what the deck's about. Playing big fatties. So just uh, enjoy yourself. Don't, don't get too competitive with this deck. Um, hopefully your opponents won't kill you super quick. But uh, yeah, that's what we have. That's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the deck tech. And then you know, I'll, I'll leave off with a question: Do you think Wizards is pushing his commanders too far by giving him the uh, a fun ability right here, Bruce extra man, and then just tacking on win con? Literally just value win con, value win con, just like goalless. So what do, you, what do you guys think of that? And also another question is: What do you guys think of cheating creatures into play? Like, you know, with Kalia, with Kinnon, I feel like it, it's getting to dangerous territories the more commanders you have cheating creatures into play, as you saw what, what just happened there. Um, but, you know, on, on one end it's fun, on the other end it's dangerous. So you gotta find the right balance between fun and dangerous. Um, so, so leave your answers in the comments below. What do you think about cheating creatures? You like it? You hate it? Uh, you're neutral, you know? And anyways, if you like the video, if you like my deck tech, give me a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, you know, help help support the channel, make more deck techs, more powerful ways to cheat creatures in. You know, I, I, I like cheating creatures in. Um, and as always, have a wonderful day.